live from New York City. It's Web Electronics with Becky Stern. Welcome back. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It's good to be back. It's May 27th, 2015. We're live in downtown Manhattan in lovely air-conditioned Adafruit factory as it starts yes. to heat up outside. Mm, we were gone last week, so we have an extra special show packed full of wearable electronics for you today. Phil, can you tell us what's on today's show? On today's show, we've got Wearable Wednesday. A debut project for making videos. Very meta. Yeah. Wearable about wearable about wearable. <laughs> Component of the week. Some LED strips you can use to make this week's project. Material spotlight. All about Velcro tape. We use it for everything. It'll be our, our clingiest, stickiest section of the, the show. <laughs> yeah. Questions and answers. If you have any wearable electronics questions, you can post them in the chat now or the comments later or on Google Plus or Twitter or the Adafruit blog, and we will catch them all like Pokemon and answer them on a future show, making you eligible to win the giveaway, which this week is a copy of Getting Started with Adafruit Flora by me and Tyler Cooper. That's right. All that and more on wearable electronics with Becky Stern. OK. All right, so let's get this started. First up, um, where were you? I was in California. Okay, we fun. did this art show. Fat Lab is this free art and technology yeah. group that I'm a part of on the internet, and we had our last um, art show at yeah. Gray Area in San Francisco. I saw lots of Instagram photos of you near someone with your uh, Compu Body Sock. Thing. <laughs> right, so my Compu Body Sock is what was being exhibited, and yeah. so I had to like make a tape mannequin and like transport it from where we were staying to the gallery, which means yeah. you have to like wear it on the Bart train. And um, nobody on the train really, really, I think they've seen some crazy stuff on the Bart train, and they just like don't even, they're they didn't like, even care. Oh yeah, this was Tuesday. I saw that. Already. Right, but the show's still up. If you're in the Bay Area at Gray, it's at Gray Area, which is kind of like an IBM esque art and tech center. Um, okay in uh, San Francisco until the 31st. And it's cool, it's all full of, full of lots of other tech art besides my laptop sock. Okay, it's good to have you back. Um, it's good to be back. Yeah. It's warm here though, it's really cold in San Francisco. It is, it gets, it gets a little chilly. Um, New York City itself is cold and unforgiving, um, but the weather's kind of nice right now. You know, I found <laughs> San Francisco to be pretty unforgiving also. Cold and unforgiving too. <laughs> <laughs> um, unless you're a Silicon Valley billionaire. No, but even then, like, I mean, okay. yeah, we drove by Mark Zuckerberg's new house. It looks yeah. really nice. That's cool. It's got like copper downspouts on the gutters and really? stuff. Looks really classy. Okay. <laughs> it's intense. Um, well, if you want to save some money on your way to be a Silicon Valley billionaire. Yeah, if you have a new wearable startup idea and you want to prototype it, you, yeah. can, um, you can use code DOTSTAR to get 10% off your whole yeah. order. Everything except Eagle Cat software and gift certificates uh, in the Adafruit store. Yeah, most of the exciting Kickstarters are a pretty much an Adafruit wish list that come to life with the yeah, video. Yeah, and you can really like get really far with your Adafruit prototype before you yeah. like bring it to manufacturing yeah. and stuff. So like we see that happen a lot. That's what we're here for, right? Okay. I guess. Yep. <laughs> Launch Herbal the business of your, of your dreams. Every Wednesday on the Adafruit blog is we showcase the coolest wearable projects, um, and Jessica blogs and Leslie blogs and I blog and everybody else blogs all these cool projects that you guys make and um, news in wearables. And uh, I have some some highlights to share with you today. This Gracias. is Birch Ozkan, delightful Turkish lady whose name I can never pronounce properly. Um, it's her thesis project from uh, Parsons School of Design, my alma mater. It's this. Um, like dress that is supposed to mimic fall so it has these like leaves on it and she spent like so long prototyping this like mechanism that with like knit all wire and wax and all these different materials to try to like release the leaves with electronics and so um she's we've covered her stuff on the on the that's, show a couple yeah, times that's a before tough one because you have to wear it and then it has the leaves have to come off right yeah. and so very theatrical very lovely learn more about it on her site and um she does great work Okay, and I presume up. now that you graduated, you could hire her to do something for you. <laughs> yeah. This is another customer project um, that's like a, a, da a dance thesis, interactive uh, dance performance garment that a customer of ours consulted on. That's um, two accelerometers on the hands and that then activate this light pattern on the bodice of this dress. Looking quite beautiful in this documentation video. You guys are really up in your game. Yeah. All these are becoming videos now. It's kind of nice. It's really nice, yeah. Um, this is from the show and tell, a, a participant on our weekly Google Plus Hangout. Oh, Virgil, I think. Um, yeah, Virgil yeah. posted up this video of um, these LED daffodils. It's based on the tiara code, but yeah. uh, so it has neopixels inside these false flowers. Are they false flowers? They look Maybe they're real. I can't tell if the daffodils are real. Um, and they flash a nice LED pattern. Lovely um, to like up your Mother's Day game. That's great. Or springtime or whatever. Yeah. Then um, Charlotte in the UK made this really cool step piano with Flora and a piezo buzzer and the Velostat sensors. So kind of like a smaller version of um, 
like that big toy keyboard at FAO Schwartz that you jump yeah, on, yeah, yeah. Um, using the Velostat, which is that uh, material with, that becomes more conductive when you pinch it. Yeah. So analog step sensors. And um, this is an Element 14 video. She, Charlotte has this this new little show on the Element 14 YouTube channel, Circuits with Charlotte. And oh, that's great. it's pretty rad. I would check out the rest of this video if Yay, I were you. Yeah, more wearable video shows. Because yes. I just watch this one over and yes. over every week. Me too. <laughs> it's like watching Game of Thrones like over and over. It's like, okay, there's a cool dragon sound. Just watch it over and over. Okay. Yeah, this is awesome. So go Charlotte. I can't wait to see right. more of that coming up. Um, other, in other wearable news, the annual Wearable Tech Expo gaining steam in the conference zone is planned for this July at the Javits Center here in New York. Uh, Adafruit's yeah. a media sponsor, which means we tell you about it, yeah. and they in turn tell their attendees about yeah. Adafruit discount There's code. a bunch of Wearable Tech Expo-like entities. This right. Is the one this is the U.S. one. There's US a bunch one, of ones yeah. in the U.K. also. Um, but, I mean, we're happy to blog them all. Yeah. If you guys want to, like, check out the speaker lineup, um, See if you're interested in going. They gave us a discount code for Adafruit customers. It's on the, um, or Adafruit readers. It's on the blog. Yeah. So check that out in July at the Javits Center. Okay. In other Adafruit news, I did an interview with um, Intel IQ, which is the, like, these Intel innovation blog. I saw that. Um, so, you know, if you can't get enough of me talking, yeah. <laughs> go check well, it out. Yeah, Intel's interesting as they've decided to dip their toes into the maker world and do things like the Galileo and the Edison. Um, and then they have, like, a little wearable version that they're, they're doing. Yeah. Um, they're also doing a lot of content. So they did something with uh, Vice, mm -hmm. and now they're doing their own series of interviews and articles. Mm -hmm. so. Well, Creators Project is the Vice Intel yeah. like, collaboration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, smart. I also, I mean, like, just a freelance reporter, but I met also another freelance reporter from that's writing for IQ at the Fat Lab show. So, yeah. like, they've got fingers in everything. Yeah. No, <laughs> so, smart. If you're going to talk about electronics now, you have to have content and videos that go along with it. Yeah. So... So that's cool. Nice yeah. little interview. Has a picture of my dog, which, you know, I love it when they lead with the picture of my dog. That's nice. <laughs> Should make that a requirement. Yeah, right? All right, so this is... In um, Adafruit news, we had an update to the Flora tutorial yeah. uh, to support the... with a special page on blinking the new onboard NeoPixel on the Flora board. So yeah. um, it doesn't use any more pins. Like, if you don't have any fewer pins available to you, it uses an, a previously unused pin, pin 8, yeah. on, on the Atmega um, 32U4 to drive this onboard NeoPixel. There's some sample codes. You can get your your Flora onboard NeoPixel blinking. Yeah. With the new Flora version 2. Yeah, and I guess on like just a, a separate note, so while you were gone. Yeah, what happened uh, while I was gone, while Phil? While you were gone, um, so on Sunday, uh, sorry, or was it Saturday? One of the days at Maker Fair in Bay Area, Massimo. Oh yeah, it was Saturday, yeah. Yeah, Massimo announced that Adafruit's making Arduinos. Mm -hmm. So that was the big news. Yeah. And then yesterday, sorry, the day before, Monday, Monday um, uh, everybody had off at Adafruit. Uh, Lady Ada and I came in here, and uh, we worked on the first Arduino Uno to be manufactured here in the U.S., and uh, Massimo just happened to be flying through. He stopped by, and he signed them. So big news. Uh, tonight on Ask an Engineer, we're going to talk about it more. Yeah. But um, uh, very cool. And then you know, a couple of weeks ago, previously, we started shipping the Arduino Gemma. So things are things are working out. So this um, Arduino Gemma is the first was the first Arduino board to ship made in the correct. U.S. Yeah, and the Uno is next up, right? Yeah, Uno's. And, and then we're gonna make what micros more. and all yeah. the other ones. Yeah, and uh, I've been covering the Arduino space for a while. Never been a better time to jump into doing Arduino. I know, stuff. right? It's, it's a really good so time. So much information. It's a really good there. time. The IDE is very easy to use. You yeah. can get all the boards and the libraries. It's a good time. It's a good time. Okay. It's never um, a bad time to learn electronics, though. No, but if you just so wait until now, good call. Good because it's <laughs> way easier. It's way easier now. Or if you're like 15 and you're just getting into this stuff, this is like the perfect time to be born. Like every no complaints out of you. Everything yeah. is. But back in my day, yeah, it was, it, was, <laughs> it was terrible. For like, we used basic stamps and we liked it. it. We didn't know any better. We were, we were like animals. I I may have borrowed a pick a, a pick chip programmer from Parsons. No, it was just. We didn't know any better. Mounted on a piece of wood, it cost like eight hundred dollars. No, and we didn't have anything. There was no easy. <laughs> there was no ease of use. There was nothing easy. Anyways, um, now I have it so made. I can be like, hey, I kind of want short alligator clips. Yeah, okay. Bing, 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 bing. I know yeah. magic. Okay. Anyway, okay. So this week's project we're going to debut now. It is uh, this roll-up video light. So we got this idea from a. F uh, Unfunded Kickstarter that's still yeah. trying to get enter enter into their manufacturing. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a portable fabric backed um, yeah. lighting source using two colors of dot star LED strips, the warm white and the cool white, yeah. which provide a really nice even good refresh rate um, light source for video and photography. Um, and we have a 
fabulous video to okay. show it off. Let's watch it. Today's DIY project is a flexible, portable light source for video and photography. It can squish into small spaces, easily hang up on location, and it's simple and fun to make. Different lighting situations call for a different color temperature of light, so we'll combine warm and cool white LED strips and program a Pro Trinket to adjust the light with a four-button membrane keypad. We saw something similar in a crowdfunding campaign recently, and when it was canceled, we still wanted one. So now that we have these dot star LED strips in the store, we can build one together. Follow along with the step-by-step -step guide on the Adafruit Learning System. The link is in the description. It's a good idea to prototype your circuit with a solderless breadboard before affixing everything permanently. And if you can, have a second set of parts on hand to build your circuit using the prototype as reference. Start by laying out your LED strips and attaching silicone coated wire in between them. Here's a pro tip for soldering to these tiny pads. Solder every other wire on alternating sides of the flexible circuit board to help avoid short circuits. After attaching the LEDs to your pro trinket and the keypad as well, load up the sample program using the Arduino IDE and test that everything works as expected. The next step gets a little messy, so put on some gloves and protect your work surface. Permatex 66B silicone adhesive is the only glue we've found that sticks to the sheathing on the LED strips, and it smells like salt and vinegar chips. I mean, use it in a well-ventilated area. Carefully plug the open ends with adhesive to provide protection and strain relief to the delicate wire connections, and let the glue dry overnight. While the glue dries, you can get to making the fabric backing. Use two pieces of denim, canvas, nylon, or whatever thick material you've got. With right sides together, stitch most of the way around the perimeter before turning it right sides out and top stitching around the edge. You can optionally add D-rings or clasps for easily clipping the light panel to things, and on this one I also created a battery pocket with strategic stitching. Once the glue is dry on your circuit, all that remains to do is stitch it in place on the fabric backing. Instead of sewing long continuous runs of thread, stitch and tie off at each location. That way, if one stitch gets snagged, the whole thing doesn't unravel. You can try out different translucent fabrics to use as diffusion or use it as is. These LED strips are weather resistant, but if you want to use this light in the rain, you'll have to protect the circuit further. Check out our episode on rugged wearables for more tips on making things durable. We hope this project is a jumping off point for your own video or work life. You can even use this technique in a structured garment like a hoop skirt. Be sure to share what you make on our weekly show and tell hangout on Google Plus and subscribe if you're not already to catch our freshest episodes the soonest. All right, we're back. That was a bright project. <laughs> see, what you, see what you did there, Phil. Yeah, um, so I brought these with me when I went to California last week because I had some interviews to do with some fellow Fat Lab yeah. members, and um, they worked great. I was really surprised. Like, awesome. They, like, throw it in your suitcase. It's super light and flexible. Yeah. No problems through the airport, by the way. Like, I checked it. I checked them coming back, and I carried them on going there. Yeah. Um, and you know how they want you to carry on extra lithium batteries anyway, so you yeah. can just pop out the battery and check them on, or whatever. Like, People criticize stuff, the stuff we make about airports and stuff. Like this, really just looks no. like headphones on, under don't. the X-ray. People don't. Horrible trolls do. Horrible, 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 <laughs> horrible souls that something really bad happened to them. Because like, we'll, or they're just paranoid. We'll, it's we'll, cool. We'll show a wearable project. We'll show a project that obviously, like, you're not going to go traveling with. It's like we have like an yeah, but like TV like, be gone jacket, no problem yeah. through the airport security. Like, I went flown through it, thrown with it but, so many times. But we'll, they'll, they'll be like projects like an umbrella. Or like, you know, someone makes like a rocket power scooter, oh, be better not take you that take to, the to the airport. <laughs> okay, random commenter. Well, anyway, <laughs> random commenters. I took these through all kinds of airports and did yeah. just fine. And and it wasn't because it was just, they were looking at me, like my suitcase went through the luggage too. And they, anyway, um, they worked really great. And um, I have another, this is like, so this is like a key light. You can put it in front of your person. You could use it as a hair light. I made this tiny one with the super dense LED strips. And that's yeah. the next picture. Can you show? Right. Is, um, You're making too many lights here. I know, right? I know. Um, <laughs> we'll put it in, we put it in the, the lap. We oh, called so it a lap, lap light, or lap for the dudes, we called it a beard light. So if you go to the next you picture, can light up the beard. you can light up the beard, oh, and you can nice. also light, like, if somebody's wearing a hat, you can kind of mitigate the shadow that the overhead yeah. um, sunlight causes. Okay. 
Um, so, I mean, this is a really fun project. If you're into sewing and electronics, it's a pretty good beginner project for okay. sewing because the sewing and the electronics are made separately and then put together. Yeah. Um, the tutorial, I'm sorry that I just came back from vacation and the tutorial circuit diagram is like just almost done. I'll yeah. put it up right after you're the show. You're going to go over there and do it. Right after the show, I'm going to go put it. behind there and you're going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to do and it. And you're going to hit publish. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so the tutorial is live. It's just like got one little page missing and I promise okay. I'll put it right up. <laughs> if, if you're going to buy the stuff, use the code dot star because that'll get you 10% off. Build materials is complete. So you can you can already create a shopping cart you for your project. All right, let's do component of the week. Okay, um, so more about these LED strips. Yeah, these is, are dot stars. Yep, they're, so dot star LED strips are kind of like NeoPixels in that they're addressable LEDs. We first got the RGB versions, but they're a two-wire protocol, so so um, clock and data, which um, means that they're not so dependent on such precise timing for um, yeah. using with microcontrollers. So that means they're easier to use with like Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone. But we also got these, um, so they're addressable, meaning you can turn them individually on and off, do animations, all kind yeah. of use it as a display, all yeah. kinds of crazy stuff. That's a good boy. And um, but what's fancy about these particular ones is that they're uh, RGB light. If you turn all the LEDs on, you get sort of white. But when you try to do film and video with yeah. pic pictures and photos, they get the colors kind of separate out. So we got these warm and cool white LEDs. And so instead of like an R, a G, and a B inside the case, it's three white. Yeah. And we have them in warm and cool. So um, this this light uses both and. Um, you wouldn't it fell really asleep be able to do as good of a light if you just got straight up RGB ones. Because no. Because the light, all of them on, just doesn't... Mm, yeah. It's kind of like t the color's too separated. And yeah. on a, on skin tone, it's, you're going to see the colors yeah. um, more this than you're going to see the white light. Up. Yeah, and then the dot star-ness of them... What's going on here? You know, live demo, that's what's going on here. Yeah. Um, the These, um, then you can, you know, program to, um, in the project, this week's project, code you can increment the there we go you can increment just the warm and just the cool so you can kind of create your own custom color temperature uh, yeah. depending on like what you're matching I think the battery on this guy is dead um, and okay. uh, so the dot stars give you a lot of brightness control too since you can control each of the three LEDs in the package separately and then you can also give them like a global brightness value um, okay. And we also, we, so we have them in the 60 and then the 30, which is less dense than the picture here. And yeah. then we also have it in the 144, which is what I'm using for this one. And that's the super dense, um, wow. super cool dot star super LED warm. strip, super warm or super cool yeah. white. So good for like under cabinet lighting. You want to make like a cool disco bar or something and you want it to have animations through it, but you want the light to be a really rich white and not a, a colorful tacky mess. Yeah. You can get um, these cooler white okay. LED strips. All right. Well, discount code is still in effect. Dot star all the way up to 11:59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Let's go on to Material Spotlight. Another cool material that we used in this week's uh, video light project is Velcro tape, which I use all the time for everything. And I might have covered it in a previous Becky's favorite tapes segment, but I, I can't remember. I bet you did. <laughs> but this time it's just all Velcro all the time. So you can get this stuff in sticky back, sew on, like not that sticky, industrial strength sticky, like the Velcro sticks really strong. So you can kind of, you can use it to mount like Raspberry Pi monitors to the wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We use it in art installations a lot to like put speakers on a thing That's or put idea. your Raspberry Pi video looper on the back of your TV. Um, and uh, I also use it in a lot of wearables projects. So here yeah. I use it to do quick release stuff for batteries. Um, on anything that buckles on or snaps or like zippers on something that's hard to take off of your body, you want to make sure that the battery yeah. can be removed in case you make a mistake and it starts burning you. Call, I call it flail to eject battery. Yeah. And um, so Velcro tape is useful for that. And then also for mounting other electronics inside or on your wearable. This bottom one here is a picture of it on a bike helmet to make one of those ELY or animal masks. Oh, yeah. Just a disclaimer not to put stuff on the outside of your bike helmet if you're actually using it as a yeah, bike helmet. Because it's supposed to be smooth. Because it becomes a projectile. Well, it, be, it becomes, well, <laughs> yes, it becomes a projectile, but it also, it can, it, you're, they're supposed to slide. Yeah. And if there's something on it that catches, you can, it can break your neck. Yeah. So anyway, that's just a disclaimer. But yeah, you can use Velcro tape for all kinds of stuff. We don't sell it in the shop, but I love it so much I needed to tell you about it anyway. Okay. All right. If you like my advice, you can get something else and get 10% off. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'll get that right now. Okay. Um, folks have questions. You have answers. Uh, they send them in. They post them up. They get them to us. You read them. You answer them. Yes. They can win a Florida book. Right. So if you have questions, you can post them up now about wearable electronics on Google Plus or Twitter or the blog or anywhere, and I'll gather them up and answer them here, as I'm about to do now. OK. First question. This is from, hi. Lyrics always on my mind. Lyrics always on my mind. <laughs> I'm a beginner, but I really want to learn to make a changing and or single color LED necklace. Can you make a tutor tutorial on how to make an LED build that would be best 
for use on a necklace. Yes, so we can. I made two necklaces. They're not a single LED, but I think you could use this circuit to get you started. Um, both the LED punk collar with the single color, uh, like big gumdrop style LEDs, we sell that as a kit. And then um, an upgrade to that is the NeoPixel version with the through hole NeoPixels. Yeah. So like that's a really good progression. Start with the single color one, which is less complicated and just battery powered. Then if you get if that goes well, build one with the with the Gemma and the NeoPixels. Yeah. And then if you get super advanced and you want to do like really tiny things, you can look at our circuit and our code that we did for the eye necklace and the eye cufflinks because it's a single LED. Right. It pulses, and we actually had a I lot of people. I forgot about that. Oh my gosh, it's so long ago now. Uh, it's such a cool thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, it pulses the same as a Mac does or did when, yeah. when Max kind of did that when it was. They still do that uh, when they're sleeping, sleep. don't they? I think it's starting to change. I think I think the Macs now are just a block of aluminum. You don't get there's nothing else. They just give it to you. They don't have. <laughs> and they say, and it's sealed up, and they say don't you don't need anything else. You only need one port. You, you no ports. No anymore. external LEDs. There's no ports anymore. They're just like think about what you've done. <laughs> this is why we can't have nice things. And it's just a block of aluminum. Alum alum anyway, so alum this is a good starting point. Both of those have tutorials on the learning system. Um, just reduce it to your single LED. Uh, but okay. those through hole LEDs are great for beginners to try. Okay. Uh, next up, this is from Steve. Hello, Becky. I've been working on a NeoPixel matrix for the face of my mascot. I made the Guggenheim Hat project. I have an 8x40 matrix and it works well. I would like to set up a way to have it present text that I could call from my Bluefruit LE app. I was thinking of adding to the code where it looks for the color change from the pound sign, but use something like star one that would send my text like hope. And I would also like to know if there's a way to get a bold or larger font. I have a NeoPixel. More NeoPixel. I have I'm, more NeoPixel. I have more NeoPixel. <laughs> we, we like selling more NeoPixel and supporting more NeoPixel. And I would like to make my matrix 14 by 40. 14 Thanks, by Steve. 40. Thanks, right. Steve. Um, yeah, so you can, um, with the new Bluefruit LE Connect app, um, it has not just the UART ability, but also like a couple of other um, methods for sending information to your Bluefruit, including this like up, down, left, right directional arrows. And I was thinking that maybe if you wanted it to be preset text and you didn't want to be able to change it dynamically, you can just have those preset texts stored in your Flora or your Arduino or whatever's connecting to your Bluefruit. Yeah. Um, and then use the directional arrows in the Bluefruit LE Connect app to um, trigger like those preset texts to be displayed from your Arduino instead yeah. of having the Bluefruit LE app send the text over. Okay. Um, and then you asked for about the font. Um, so Phil B did a really nice job with the font on the Neo Matrix library, um, but it's just kind of like interpreted from a pixel font. So yeah. if you look up more pixel fonts online, you might be able to um, engineer yeah. your own your own Neo Matrix I like font. That we finally have everything you need to do this stuff. Yeah. Before it was always like. One day we'll have the iOS app that you need the, to make your own apps, and like we got it. And then, yeah, oh, one day and we'll for have, Android too. And for Android, yeah. Um, and oh, one day we'll have like the Bluefruit thing. One day we'll have a wearable one. One day we'll have a. Yeah, have a, they're all there for you there. now. They're there. Okay. But I, I think if you also request in the forums for Philby to work up some more fonts, that he might bite on that. He might. <laughs> he might bite back. Okay. This is my <laughs> he is a dragon. Yeah. <laughs> can you change the? Oh, sorry. Can you charge the Flora and Gemma with solar power? And can I use a USB cable to charge it with a computer? or even backup battery. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Um, so the Flora itself doesn't have any charging on board, but we do have this project, the Solar Boost Bag, that is basically a solar charging backup battery, which you could use to drive your Flora circuit and then have it solar powered. And it also has a USB port for the, the LiPoly solar charger we carry in the shop. Um, Ch uh, charges via solar panel or USB port. So okay. I, would, I would look at this project and then just plug your Flora like straight into it. OK, thanks so. This is from Ewan, Ewan McMahon. McMahon. OK, I have a couple, uh, first, uh, the only question, actually, I'm going to skip to the second one. Um, I have an idea for a project that uh, would use the Flora, the new Bluefruit module, and the Flora GPS, basically a navigation hat like the city bike helmet, but with the ability to set the destination over Bluetooth. But both the GPS and Bluefruit modules connect over serial. And Flora has only one accessible port. I guess it would be possible to use a hardware serial for one software serial for a pair of digital pads for the other. But is there a better way? Any way to use the hardware serial for both? Tough question. A complicated question, right? Um, because it's true that the floor only has one TX and RX like broken out for you. You could use software serial, though I'm not sure it's going to be fast enough for the floor GPS because um, it updates quite frequently. But you could try it. But what I would recommend as a better and cheaper way is to just use the 
GPS on your phone. Like if you're already having the phone be constantly yeah. connected to the Blue Fruit LE module connected to your Flora, then like, and you're sending it information, it's very easy to pipe through the GPS um, data from your phone's GPS. Yeah. So that would save you a component um, with a $40 component and um, yeah. would enable you to do your project with less, less bulk and less work, um, except okay. for the software side. Um, that was your only question, right? Yeah, and I actually it? don't know if the um, if either one of those will work well over um, over software serial. Yeah, also, it's this possible. One, this one also post up in the forums because we have a lot of people doing a lot of stuff because all this Bluetooth stuff just kind of came out. Right. So post I up. would post up in the forums about that software serial question. Yeah. But my advice would be to just skip it and use the GPS use the on phone. your phone. Okay. But all you right. tell me. I read the forums, and those yeah. guys are really smart. Okay, let's give away something. Okay. So if someone asks a question... They get their name put the in name the Stecky hat. Burn hat, yeah. and then I pull it out randomly, and you win a copy of this book that Tyler and I wrote. Okay, today's winner is... You tied the, you tied the knot. Looking back. <laughs> I've been doing tying it up for the last like month and a half straight, and it's a suspense, Phil. Okay, I, I'm just like... <laughs> It gives me time to hum a song. Yeah, it's fine. I don't Okay, lyrics always on my mind. All right. You're a beginner and you just got yourself a book for beginners. Congratulations. You can um, claim your prize by emailing support at adafruit.com. And, um, and tell them you won the Flora book. The Flora book, and you'll yeah. get it in the mail. Okay. Shazam. All right, well, if you didn't win, don't worry. You can still have the same feeling as winning, which is when you put a code in. And you get and a deal. Discount. You're like, ding, ding. It's like a... It's like a slot machine that always works. It shows you how much money it gives yeah, you. Bing, yeah, bing, bing, bing. So you can use the code dot star all the way up to uh, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Everything except for gift certificate and software, because we can't do that. Um, all of the atoms in the store are 10% off. Yeah. Um, no bits. So uh, we got more going on. Right. So if you can't get enough of live Adafruit broadcasting, then you should tune into our show and tell tonight yeah. and show off your own project if you have one to show. Yeah. And then uh, stick around at 8 o'clock for Ask an Engineer with Mrs. Lady Ada and Mr. Lady Ada. Yeah. But what if I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I still want more. Like, more NeoPixels. Well, <laughs> then you <laughs> should tune into our 3D Thursday show every Thursday with Knowing Pedro. Yeah. Do an awesome job showing you CAD techniques, electronics, and 3D printing. They're like, going crazy. They're, they're, what, since when are they not going crazy? They're going crazy. The stuff that they've been doing lately, so this is the, they have wooden filament. This is a, this is a link sword. Look at this. Um, so uh, I've been moving this stuff. So <laughs> it's pretty, we live in the future. Yeah, so this, they, they 3D printed a wood sword. Okay, like, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fine, guys. And so, um, yeah, this is now back there. We um, recently, uh, we're moving stuff around in Adafruit, so I have some of the 3D printed stuff that they do. Did you guys uh, miss the puppets? Because they're back. Yeah, no, the puppets are back, but. Okay, well, that's. Uh, yeah, that's don't it. miss, don't miss your, here, I'll take that. Yeah, don't right. miss your um, cosplay, the best of cosplay and, um, more on yeah. the 3D Thursday show every Thursday. Okay. Well, that's it. That's, that's the show uh, this week, Becky. If that's you um, are tuning in for the first time or you are not already subscribed to the Adafruit channel on YouTube, you should be because then you get the new videos the fastest. You know, they yeah. get emailed to you in your box if you prefer and um, helps us out and we like Or if you're like, like the guy from Memento and you just have to write down wearable electronics that Becky's turn on you all the time because you, could just, you have to take a photo of it and then you have to remember, like, I have to watch it. You could just set a Google Calendar reminder by RSVPing to the Google Plus event and then you wouldn't have to write it on your arm or take a picture or anything. Yeah, you could get a tattoo. You could 3D print it. <laughs> could 3D print things. a wooden sword with the date and time of you the show on it. Um, we're here. I'm back again. I don't, don't worry. I won't go on vacation again for a little while. Um, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to check out the blog for more wearable electronics okay. all day. Bye-bye. Bye. Zoom.